So I started my fitness journey at an earth-shattering 118 pounds. That's about 53 kilos or just under eight and a half stone. Now I know I'm not exactly 90s Dorian Yates now, but I have spent 10 years of my life training and for six of those years I've been coaching others as well. I've learned a lot along the way. and I've been a voracious reader and researcher of the science. Plus I've made just about every mistake you can possibly make. So to impart some of that wisdom, I wanna share some of the lesser spoken about stuff when it comes to building muscle. We all know that you need to lift, eat high protein, get enough sleep and be consistent. So instead of beating that dead horse, I wanna share some gems that are genuinely practical and pretty easy for you to implement as well. Kicking things off with numero uno, stop changing your workouts every single week. There's no muscle growth mechanism out there that involves sneak attacking your muscles. Your body doesn't need to be shocked, it needs to be progressively challenged over time. But despite this, we see people winging it with no plan, walking into the gym and just deciding what workouts they're gonna do that day or even purposefully doing different exercises every time they hit a muscle group. Now, one of the main problems with this is that constantly switching up your exercises and changing what your focus is that week doesn't allow you to just master the fundamentals. If your goal is to grow your lower body, for example, you should probably get really good at a squat variation, a deadlift variation, and a hip thrust variation. Then just plan your accessory work around those key lifts and according to the body parts that you want to improve. Let's give the example that on week one, you do five rep squats. On week two, you swap that out for 12 rep leg press. On week three, you fancy doing 10 rep sumo squats. And then week four, you feel like doing a burnout, so you do jump squat circuits. What are the chances that when you get back to five rep squats again, that you've improved? I'm gonna say slim to none. Whereas if you just back squatted twice a week for those four weeks, you undulated in reps and load and you progressively overloaded at every opportunity, you built your accessory work around those exercises, I'm gonna be willing to bet that your squat is gonna improve and your lower body will grow. Choose a few key compound lifts and progress the fuck out of them. Choose accessory work to support that and do it in focused blocks where you actually give yourself time to improve. Number two, you shouldn't use super high doses of antioxidant supplements like vitamin C and glutathione, and you probably shouldn't do extreme recovery techniques either, like cryotherapy. Training is stressful on the body, and it's completely normal, natural, and actually desirable to have a stress response after lifting. It's that stress that your body actually adapts to and you get bigger and better because of it. Now this adaptation and improvement kicks in because of signaling. Your body can detect that things have happened like oxidative damage and then it signals for repair to happen. If you're necking a thousand milligrams of vitamin C post-workout or trying to reduce all inflammation with cryotherapy, you can blunt key signaling pathways like muscle protein synthesis and prevent your body from detecting that there's even damage there to go and repair. Let your body just do its thing. It's probably smarter than you. Thirdly, you should stop chasing maximal soreness. Soreness isn't synonymous with growth. If I told you to go and run a marathon, would your quads be sore? Yes, but does running marathons make your quads grow? Obviously that's a facetious example, but I want to illustrate that soreness doesn't directly cause growth. Coming back around to point number one, your goal is to improve over time. And so if you're always waddling into the gym like you've just spent the night on Brokeback Mountain, your squat performance isn't going to improve. And you'll be perpetually holding yourself back because fatigue is too high. Trying to just like beat yourself into the ground with every single training session is a slippery slope. It's like that saying that if the only tool you've got is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. You need more tools and to consider more things in your overall program than just how hard can I spank myself today. Number four, gaining muscle doesn't have to mean getting fat. Now you will inevitably gain some body fat if you're consistently eating a calorie surplus, but how lean you stay is mostly up to you and depends on the size of your calorie surplus. You won't build max muscle mass when you're like competition shredded, but you also don't need three chins. 
Ultimately, there is a limit on how much muscle you can build in like a certain period of time, but there isn't a limit on fat storage. And so whether you've gained five pounds over the course of six weeks or 25 pounds, they're probably gonna be a very similar amount of muscle. Just the 25 pounds has a lot more body fat and water tagged on with it. This might rub some people up the wrong way, but I think often people just use the excuse that they're bulking to get really loose with their diet. All of a sudden they have these rationalizations for eating 1500 calories of Domino's and putting away 5000 calories on a cheat day because their goal is to gain. But the problem is that this leads to too much body fat gain too early and people hit the ceiling of what they're comfortable with. So you run out of room to keep gaining at a slow and steady pace and instead often people will do things like mini cuts which coincidentally is number five. Don't do mini cuts every month. We can illustrate this as an example and say that person A wants to go slow and steady and dedicate a year of her life to gaining lean weight, say 0.5% of body weight per week. Now, across that course of the year, she's gonna increase her body weight 26%. So say she starts off at 150 pounds, by the end of that year, she's gonna be 189 pounds. She'll be looking drastically different to how she did at the start and will have done so in like a controlled and manageable way. Then let's say person B starts off at 150, balloons up to 160 over the first two weeks, then has to spend the next month mini cutting down to 155. Over the course of the next two months, she balloons back up and some to 175 and then cuts for the next two months to 165. All of these spikes are obviously just mainly water and fat and for all the time that she's mini cutting, she's missing out on precious time where she could be just in a small surplus and gaining quality lean muscle. And finally, not only are you treading water for a lot of that time, but person B is probably gonna hate their body along the way too and not get to actually enjoy just the process of improvement. Number six is train each muscle that you want to grow more than once per week. When we train a muscle, the growth process of muscle protein synthesis stays elevated for about 72 hours and then it's gonna drop back down to baseline in that particular muscle. So if you train a muscle on day one and then day four, it's sat back at baseline with no more growth happening. You're wasting days five, six and seven when you could have trained it again and stimulated more muscle growth. And once you've made that switch to training a muscle group twice rather than once per week, not only is it better in terms of muscle protein synthesis, but you're also gonna be able to accrue more volume across the week. Let's say you do four sets for four exercises right now. You could do just three exercises per session, but move that to twice per week and increase your volume by 50% because you've gone from four exercises to six. And total volume is a key driver for muscle growth. So you've got improved frequency, improved volume, increased gains. Number seven is another controversial one, but I think you probably should do some cardio or activities. A lot of lifters have this weird view of cardio, like it's the enemy. And I've literally seen overly fat, bulky lifters wearing stringers in the gym saying things like, fuck cardio. That mentality isn't cool. Just like me, it's not big, it's not clever. Studies show that a moderate amount of cardio per week isn't gonna negatively impact your ability to build muscle. And there are even studies out there that have shown greater gains in groups of people that did do some cardio alongside lifting. It can negatively impact your lifting in like a direct way as well. You don't wanna to have to stop a hard set of walking lunges or high rep hack squats because you're out of breath. It's then shortchanging your ability to push a certain muscle and your fitness is becoming the limiter. Not to mention that one thing that really messes with your gains is being dead. Take care of yourself. I'd genuinely really like to hear your feedback on this one. Comment below if a particular one stood out to you or especially if you disagree with one. I am all ears to that. If you haven't subscribed yet, you probably should. And I'll see you in the next one.